on a beautiful morning. Gotta be a bit careful about that because this is a private road. So, I'll try and leave enough room so if anyone does come down, car, van, tractor, yeah, you know, gotta try and be courteous to people. So, hello, hello the old, hello the new. How is everyone? All good, I hope. Um, we're up in Abaca Veni on this little job by yeah, and dropped the air on the trailer. Um, was that being not so long back actually? We delivered this machine up, yeah, and now we're picking it up. So, hey, it's a 225. Oh, pardon me. Do, do, do. Somebody said to me that you can't be stopped filming anyway, and it's not about the legal cat le legalities of it all it's about you know being courteous to people a lot of it so obviously i couldn't film where i was the other day it wasn't because of well i couldn't film i asked permission that's all so yeah there's one few anyway that's why sometimes i can't film stuff because i always try to ask people so therefore they know what's happening Anyway, right, I, dige I digest, I digest, I digress. We're up in a bit of a tight lane. It's not too bad up here, it's actually plenty of room. But always do the groundwork so that you can get out easy. So always turn around, get yourself sorted, so you can literally just drive straight out. Never pull into somewhere and then get loaded and try and find your way out. Oh, hang on, have I done that? Yeah, so literally, I can just come back by here and whoosh, down the lane. Because I'm not getting up into this place up here at all. They wanted me to drive in here when I come here. Not happening, mate. you get a lorry in there. we get an Arctic in there, but a low loader. It's a good chance he's just going to rip the back end out. Oh, stunning though, isn't it? Eh? Look at that. <clears throat> yeah, it's like I say, and I always try to ask the people before I film stuff. Keeps a good reputation between you, man. If you go back there a couple of times, you know. All right, let's get this on. Get out there. Yeah. I think we're going to cross hands then. I think. We'll see. All right. So that everything's fresh in my head and I remember, I'll say it now. <sighs> because I had to forget lots and lots and lots of things. I just heard somebody say, hey Russ, how was your day yesterday? And I thought, I need to answer that, because um, yesterday was Monday, today is Tuesday. How was my day yesterday? Let me tell you, and I'll even show you. <sighs> An absolutely beep, 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 beep. Beep, disaster. They actually still work, so before anyone starts crying, um, I've got indicators, brake lights, and reverse lights. They actually still work. It's held together by hopes and dreams of my life. <laughs> uh, I was on a job yesterday uh, down in Cornwall. I did was going to film stuff, but I just... Everything was going wrong. The... People don't care no more, and that's the problem. There's no interest. I always phone customers to say, look, I'm on my way, you know, um, so that the kit can be ready and everything else and makes life easier for me, life easier for them, so I can get in and out of sight as fast as possible. Look at that. Um, but yesterday, no matter what I'd done, um, it just went wrong. Um, looking for kit on site, looking for buckets, looking for attachments. Nobody's interested. So, down in Cornwall, I uh, left my yard yesterday, managed to get back to my customer's yard in Newport, um, and 11 minutes left. And that M5 coming up is every day. I've gone up there lately, 
it's killing, killing, killing. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. Unreal, man. <sighs> yeah. So my day yesterday, beep. Another comment I had as well. I, I've gone through some of them. I've started to go through. Was, why do I find the work for the truck? Because I do. Um, truth of the matter is, this is, I don't work for a transport company. I'm a, we are a civils company. Uh, ground workers, machines, plant. When about, oh, I don't know, but 18 months ago, maybe longer, I had a bit of a falling out with some of the office staff because um, it was like four people controlling the one lorry, which was making things rather difficult, rather complicated, and it was unnecessary. Um, so I kind of threw my teddies out the pram a little bit. Um, spoke to the spoke to the mad scientist, spoke to the lunatic, and basically said, "I'm off." I was <laughs> um, actually a bit longer than that, now, I think. So, but three, but two months later, he said to me, "You are here's the truck. Um, put your big bike pants on, and away you go." So that was two years ago. So the reason it was done like that. Um, it's made things a lot easier because people just can get me direct. It's cut out, like I said, there was, there was four people technically involved with running that lorry from different parts of the company. So it was just so much easier then. They could just literally phone me direct. I can say yes or no. I can say when it can be fit in. Otherwise, you've got like, there was like three people. Oh, can he do this at this day? Or oh, do you need him for this day and that day? So that is why um, well, I, I do most of the work on it now. Which, like I said, it's easier. Boss looks after me, so I can't grump about that. Um, my missus still don't understand that fact, though. You ain't book your own work, so why are you late home all the time? So that is why. There's a couple of people who ask me now why I try to book the work. And if, um, like I said, if it's not a transport company as such, like I said, it's, you know, dig holes, build stuff, um, environmental, all that type of stuff, aggregate. I do know a little bit more on the transport side for like looking for work, where to go. Um, people, if I'm, if I'm ever up country somewhere, I know a rough idea. I might be able to phone somebody who might know, you know. So it makes it easier. Uh, it makes it much more profitable as well. So anyway, I hope that one answers that one. Right, i got to get out there. Yeah. We'll um, drag this on a little bit. Girls, um, I was out with a lunatic yesterday, um, which results in lack of filming which is annoying because if I know what I know now I would have filmed it but I know the, the lunatic's a bit camera shy so anyway we went to pick up some new toys for him to play with on his farm um, and now I can't find my key for my lockbox we a bit of redevelopment in here apparently all this is all being uh, cleaned off and um, well made to look pretty basically It is half past five. Oh, I'm being evicted out of this place as well, apparently. In the nicest possible way. So, today's little plan. Ha ha ha. Ba ba ba. Truck is bogging. I haven't done it for probably a fortnight. Mm. That's in for MOT. So we haven't got a trailer. Because he won't buy me a second one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to have something slightly different today. Because I'm a very resourceful kind of person. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. So, you know. <sighs> right, so I'm going to get this washed because it's absolutely bogging. And uh, we'll get that uh, rocking and rolling. Um, that's not very professional of me, is it? I'm not really sure what happened to that. But hey ho. Um, <laughs> whoops. <sighs> Let's um, I'll do sit there and. Uh, would you like now to coil some rope? I'll show you how to coil the rope. Please stay there, don't fall off. 
because you're expensive. <sighs> Let's see if fish is going to untangle. I hope so. Left to right, whatever you are. By the time you finish doing this, your arms and shoulders should be in bits. Make sure you always leave that one out. Very important. One said rope, okay. This has to be cut, yes, I know. Maybe I'll do it tonight for my park up, I don't know. So, one time rope. Make sure that ends on the outside. Cut the loops around. And then, hands through. So you've got that. And then you'll end up with that. And then you can knock that up onto whatever you want. I'd always go back through a second time. Just like that. I can't come undone. When you throw a coil of rope, take that off. And this is the end you pull from. Don't ever pull off that one. It turns into a big pile of spaghetti. And there's Mark. If he turned up, I would have shown him what a coil of rope, but he didn't. Wise man, 1C. <sighs> Sometimes you just keep your mouth shut. Um, my trailer's in Fremo T, as you all shall definitely know by now. And um, I was under the impression it's back a week Tuesday. No, not a week Tuesday. It's back next Tuesday. It's Wednesday today. So me being me, no problem, mate. We can do that. <laughs> Pretty good earner as well, I thought. You know, happy days. That's, that's okay. I just looked at my calendar and I realised the trail don't come back till Wednesday. I need to be in Colchester Wednesday morning. Well, the problem with transport especially lorries and arctics can't really do a lot unless you've got a trailer attached to you shizer oh well anyway we have got a trailer on the back of us we got a um got a flat trailer and we're off to nottingham um yeah well yeah show you after maybe um yeah i don't know why i do these things to myself man i knew i should have um not answered the phone then but hey oh it is where it is isn't it so um anyway just for more little giggles i'm uh, you're now collecting some um uh, some it's train parts it is I'm picking up some train parts they just loaded me off i toddled i need to have a phone call to come back because they're the wrong ones. Um, it's been yeah, uh, three hours, and I'm the only lorry that's been you. <laughs> oh well, anyway, it is what it is, isn't it? I was hoping to be up and down today. I don't think that's going to happen. So we'll uh, deal with that. We're out anyway till Friday, so we're out for the next two nights tonight and tomorrow. So not a lot I can do on that one, and I'll be out Monday night, I think, as well. Oh, I tell you. Ah, oh. oh, right. So, this is what we picked up. We had two of them on. They uh, fit underneath the choo-choos. Some way. So, two of them. Uh, I think about two tonne apiece. So, four tonne. Oh, well, that was it. What the? 
anyone tell me what these strange stupid things are <laughs> uh, play your cards right I might be able to show you how to use them <laughs> yes we're on a flat for a couple of days um, because mine's in for MOT so I managed to get hold of somebody do me a favour son any chance of a couple of days bish bash bosh not actually a bad trailer in all fairness not a bad setup on this got a coiler on it as well I lift all them up and there's a well underneath and you put the coils in so back in the many uh, earlier days this is all I used to do was flat work uh, general oil steel structural stuff um, if it's timber if it fitted that was it everything was always sheeted as well a lot of it was if you go back really go back on some of my videos you'll see that but um, yeah makes a nice little change actually she looks good with a flat on <laughs> Just, just picture this now, right? Black, Alcoa's. Oh, she would be sweet, wouldn't she? You know what I mean? Oh, she'd be like a little princess. Uh, so, don't see these on a lot of trailers, but we used to use them for when we used to go into the um, British Steel. Uh, British Steel or Tata or Chorus, whatever you want to call it these days, since he keeps changing his bloody name. Um, they wouldn't let you load unless you had them on the trailer if he was loading coil. Because apparently they deemed them unsafe if you strapped off the side of the trailer. Or if you... Uh, they, they didn't like that. I, I don't know why. We, we never strapped coils as a rule. We, we never literally put the coil on, sheet, and we'd be gone. So, yeah, we're tipping two of these off. We're picking up, I believe it's three to go back. And then, um, I'm not sure what we're doing after that. I think I'm tipping these off in the morning. Um, and then I don't know what I'm doing then. I think I solved my problem with the trailer, though. I think I can borrow one, so... It is what it is, isn't it? No point worrying about it, just get on with it. A lot of these people that are in the rail game, they're not exactly the most energetic, are they? Because these boys ain't. All the ones where I picked them up from. Done. Um, that's us parked up. I am in a naughty little cubbyhole. I'm actually on a slip road, which has um, been shut. They built this. They built this for when um, the Celtic man had had um, what's it called uh, the stick and ball game. Um, probably, uh, um, yeah. Uh, they built this slip slip rods, and we've never opened. They only open for like three days. So we have. Uh, they call them, I believe it's dirty, dirty wheels, now is these ones, because obviously these are knackered, they've been used. And the ones we took have been replaced. I was trying to work out what they do. And then my infinite brain remembered. Um, if you look at them, you can see the dip, the, the dip out back and forth. When they should be, because I'm technical, I should kind of sit that way. So that divot is what's been um, worn away. Oh, what the hell? Right. So what they'll do is they heat these up. Or cool them down, I can't remember which, which then takes that one off. And then they put a new one of them on. So it's, it's basically like changing a tyre, I suppose, but obviously on a metal wheel. Otherwise, it'd be rather expensive having to replace them all the time, considering there's like probably tens of thousands of them in the UK on different trains. Pardon me. Just had my food. So, yeah, um, not, not the most exciting of days. But um, I do like this trailer, though. Good setup on this, on this trailer, fair play. I don't think I'd have the, the rings, though, where they are. I'd, I'd have just go to the side rail. And I do like... 
I do like the, the posts up on here. That's a nice little touch, that is. Hmm. I think I'd spec the trailer the same, to be honest with you. Well, see, I tell you what, it seems I'm here now. Like I said, this has got a well in it. So, uh, I, I will guarantee you there'll be rubbish in this well. Yeah. Oh, what did I tell you? Oh. Trying to do is one hand. So, that's your well. And then you've got your posts here. Two posts. Put some timbers by here. And then you can put your coils in then. Hey, always rubbish in a trailer well. I hate that. It drives me mad. So, you literally just lift up what you need. Lift up the ones you want removed. Pop the wire. Do fit in the coil. And away you go. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't have them, but then wouldn't have them uh, rings. But obviously, the trailer spec for that kind of work, that kind of job. Got some post holders by as well. Definitely have them in there as well. Uh, what else have we got? What else have we got? Yeah, so pretty much just a tidy flat. I say it's not bad, Nick. Actually, it's pretty good for what it is. If anyone used to watch my old videos and stuff, right, you will know that that is driving me absolutely nuts. And the reason it's driving me mad is <laughs> the smaller you roll, fold and roll a sheet up, the easier it is to handle. So when it's like a flat pancake and it's pouring down with rain and you've got to get that up on the load, it's just, no, it's not nice at all. It's horrible, in fact. Um, it is pretty appalling and they're only little sheets um not like the older sheets with like you know 12 foot wide and um canvas on the top cloth on the sides or basically canvas all over but yeah it's a nice little night actually but uh, i don't think i should have a uh, worry about traffic coming up and down <laughs> so i don't think you should park yeah but oh, i've always parked it for years so it don't really matter um, what else was it? it was something else and I can't remember what it was um, um, balls of egg oh I'll tell you tomorrow I say tomorrow because I still don't know if I'm actually doing that job tomorrow um, I think we're tipping these out uh, down to British Steel load it's dropping a new button I think I'm going into Sheffield but I don't know I am still waiting to find out. Seems it's now like nearly nine o'clock. So we'll uh, shoot off from here about six in the morning, it's pointless and going any earlier. And hopefully we'll, uh, or by then we should know what's happening. Uh, yeah. Struggled uh, Four turn up, six turn back. Oh, the ponies were struggling. Struggling the ponies, struggling with the ponies. Where's the steps? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, so while I'm at there Timber rack on this side is one on the other side um, if, if I had my way I'd have a A sheet rack on here So you can have them all tidied up Because I do hate stuff on the trailer bed It drives me mad, I hate it um, that's one of the big things in my trailer I hate is I can carry a lot of stuff to do what I need to do because you're always trying to uh, plan for every eventuality so yeah I you know I could do it a nice flat but you know, like I said to you Alcoa's in black oh that would go really nice on the front of my little girl on the back of my little girl wouldn't it uh, alright well that's me done I'm going to um, totally pip until the morning Why is that van stop? I don't like it when vans stop. They shouldn't stop. Rachel. It's a suspicious van. You can come for my diesel if you want, so I ain't gone then. <laughs>
I've got enough to get me where I need to go and that is it. Right, this is waffling on. Um, yeah, see you in a bit. <sighs> Jog on British Steel. You can see why they're in so much trouble. You can see why they're not profitable. I haven't been in this place for who he um twelve years maybe more. We're in um some of you definitely know where I am, I'm down in uh how should we say the Swansea area. Um yeah, um and all I got to say is what well, an absolute shower of Shiza, it, it got here at eight o'clock. There's one lorry in front of me from the same c company. Um, they've told him he can't go in and load because he um, he don't know how to do it. Uh, the guy's been running steel in and out of Shotton for another company for quite a few years. Um, all he said was, I haven't been here before, and now they won't let him load. Because apparently all the loading procedures are different in every uh, British Steel depot you go to, or chorus, Tata, whatever you want to call them. So me being me, yeah, no problem, mate. I've uh, been here loads of times. Just it is what it is. Just you've got to bull bull your way in sometimes. Um, everything when you come to these places is written out um, in instruction books. Everywhere you turn, when you book in, when you do anything you do, and um, there's an abundance of diagrams and you to do everything um, but they always treat you like you're some kind of um, well moron because obviously you've got to have some kind of little power trip of new in these places you know as your life is boring so I got you at 8 o'clock booked in sorted everything out went up to see him at that past 8 yeah mate we'll load you at 10 after break <laughs> so don't really want to say something and you think to yourself don't say anything just yeah okay no worries mate going on break now are you and he replied with no not yet 20 minutes then we go on break at nine <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> i don't miss these places at all on the general i really don't miss them because it's an absolute shower it's it's just it's an abysmal I, I see why they shut them down, why they can't be profitable, because there's so much health and safety legislation and born idle lazy bath plugs that nothing gets done. That's that's it, plain and simple. That's why the steel industry is on its arse. It's run by the union, same as with, what happened with the coal. All the pits and all the rest of it. Ooh, I'll upset some people, wouldn't I? I know you'll upset some people, but... Um, you can't subsidise these places anymore. Uh, Port Talbot, they give a massive, massive um, government handout to them. And now they've just shut it all down. I think they stopped the night shift as well last... Oh, actually, I think it might have been last night. Wow. I was hoping to be up in Sheffield and uh, tipped tipped and reloaded this afternoon. Pfft, gone, straight away. So that would have probably, you know, cost us, or not me personally, but... The company, you know, a few hundred quid that would have to because you missed that extra load. <laughs> shockingly bad, shockingly. Um, when we used to do like um, Hartley Pool, uh, Wednesbury, I'm just trying to think now. Um, Collinbrook was another, another, another Collinbrook was another absolute pig of a place, all British steel places, mind. And just a shower, nothing can be organized. Everyone's too busy worrying about have you got a chin strap on, have you got some glasses on? Do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? And this building, Jesus Christ, um, this premises has been here a long old time. It looks like it should be levelled. Oh, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable place. And this is another place which I'm very surprised is is um still here. Anyway, we'll, um, absolute shit show. What can we do? You can complain about it. Nothing's going to happen. We just have to untangle about ten straps. It's like a big ball of paschetti. 
Why do drivers do that? All right, that's what we picked up was um, what we call top at. Uh, I think it's seven snow, ten ton, six and another ten. I think the other one is on the back. A bit windy on the dock. morning within Sheffield I just weeked in to go and tip in by there <laughs> so we're tipping and reloading in the same place which is because it's Friday so that's really nice but I just got to speak to the guy by there now I said there uh, all right tipping and uh, loading for you know for these ah for, for damn it, get it, get it. so we had a bit of a um, how can we say um, he had a bit of a, a wobbler, as we would say. And he's like, none of it's ready. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, oh, you're just going to have to wait, you are. So the key to that is now, there's two things can happen here, right? And this is the way I normally deal with these things. When they go off with a bit of a rant or they're not happy, clearly because information I'm being passed down. Same, I have the same problem. Everyone has that same problem, don't they? So what I tend to do is try and make a sarcastic joke or something to lighten the mood I said mate if I can get out here by 10 o'clock by the way it's 6 o'clock now if I can get out here by 10 o'clock mate that's, that's all I need to know oh I said I'm more to the point where's your kettle that is priority I said I'm not interested if the Lord's not ready but kettle is priority and you can see him lighten the mood a little bit he or it either goes the other way and you've just got this grumpy, miserable git who just goes, meh, we haven't got one. So, it's, like I said, I think it's about quarter past six now. Um, Just gone, used the toilet, come out by there, just took my straps off. And if anyone's wondering why I crossed the straps on the coil, there's a reason for that. If I went over straight, there's no hooks on the other side, that's why I went diagonally. The um, hooks are just past the coil. <laughs> I made a bit of a mistake on that one. So uh, you've just literally come out. He said, oh, mate, "Give me ten minutes." He said, "And we go. I'll I'll do these. Wrap these coils first. He said, then tip you and then put them straight on. He said, so you, you'll be out there quicker." I said, "What? Nine o'clock?" He went, "No." He said, "Ah, oh, well, most now we'll be out there." That's it. You can't fault that, can you? There's no point in them saying. There's no point in you kicking off with them. Because they're only gonna you're only gonna peeve them off, and then you could sit there all day. So that is one thing I have learned. Be a little bit diplomatic. You know, 
even though inside you've got a rage which would probably want to make you kick a kitten across a football pitch you you can't do it because as well if you've got to keep coming back and forth to all these places all the time you really need to be on good terms with them <laughs> no matter what happens i got rage and a fever again this morning so um yeah always try to build good rapport with the people you're delivering to all the time well i do anyway it, it does go a long way as well so i'm going to tip these literally we got coil on the well which will be on with the forklift was across not in the well and that's straight back down <sighs> We're getting tipped and the guy was a lot quicker than I expected him to be so we'll have to be quick to show you this oh, known as coil across a bed um, always on a stillage normally you do have the odd occasion they're not on stillages but to be fair 90% of the time they are so very easy to um, load a uh, guy there is uh, on the forklift somewhere is he too? Yeah, so forklift man's tipping them. And this is what not to do. That's right. What not to do. Balls in here, wet foot. Obviously all up against each other, butted up. Two straps, one and one. But really, they should be um, pretty much touching. A lot of people have just shoved some timbers there. Um, I didn't realise the guy had loaded them and I couldn't really do a lot about it then. I weren't going to argue too much. It's just not worth the hassle. But as long as you butt them all up together, like that, you just want one, one, on all, and they won't go nowhere. The only problem is you do need one up on the front. A lot of the times, that one should really sit by there, so you should have one by there, and then the coils, and then strap them. Um, any steel work you carry, or do, all right, I will tell you this now, there's only one reason it falls off. It's got nothing to do with securement, it's got nothing to do with straps or anything. It's because you're either upside down, or you've driven like an absolute ass, and that's the only way steel will come off a trailer, and that's just plain and simple as that. Steel can be very um, awkward to do, and it is a bit of a nightmare at times, but 90% steel coming off a trailer, it's a fact you've, you've basically, you've balls up. You've either loaded it wrong, or you're upside down, or like I said, um, what was the other one? I can't remember. So yeah, that is the top and bottom of that. Right, um, I'm rushing now because this guy is a bit, he's a bit quick. Fair play to him. Oh, that was um, a bit fast and furious. I wasn't expecting him to be that quick, uh, but he was that quick. That by there, literally, is the river in the new port, the old wharf. This is the old White Dead Works, which. Um, the last time I was here was in here when it was actually producing was probably at least 15 years ago. Used to do a lot of work out here. Um, all she did, it was never on a, a posh trailer like I got now. Because this um, Euroliner, Euroliner? It's not a Euroliner, Russ. It's a, what we class as a, it's not bloody nice, um, a slider. Or some people call them slider flexes and so on and so forth. I um turn so put a cup put, put the kettle on this might take me some time. So remember the top hats I brought, all that stupid strapping over it, which is absolutely ridiculous, and to be quite frankly, um they're not really gonna hold the coils because the whoever designed that wants to be shot. They want to be beaten to death with a hedgehog. I am um, the best way to do them, and this is my honest opinion, how to do um, top hats, the best way of doing them, is the most um, trailers, uh, I'm, I'm got them, but you can have like a set of posts down the bed in, I don't know, five or six foot intervals. Set of posts, 
make them a bit longer, chuck another foot on the top of them, put the pallet up against the cross strap over the top, and they ain't going. They ain't going nowhere, they, they won't move. But all our webbing and strapping, absolute rubbish. So there's something else I was gonna say. Um, yeah, um, when I first started running flat trailers, or when I first started driving, I should say, you wouldn't get one of these unless you're one of the, um, how should we say, the good boys. Yeah, you, you, you wouldn't have one of these at all unless you was a, one of the special boys. That's all they are. Clip on the front, like a torque liner. I'm trying to do this with one hand, it's not very easy. So, yeah, plain and simple. Tuck that in. Same again. Oh, bugger. Oh. Oh. Right. That's that one. And there's just two little straps on the back. I know I haven't cleaned the trailer because I'm going to load the trailer now, so anyone who's wondering why, that's why. And all we've got, strap one, and strap, oh I need my second hand. Hang on. Go on the top. Get that nice and tight. Same on this side. There's one. There's two. Pull that nice and tight. And one of my biggest pet hates with Euroline, or Euroline, the slider flex, is people don't do the back cover up. And all you gotta do, all right, all you gotta do is simply, you should go all the way up, don't get me wrong, but I ain't going to, because I'm gonna go and load the trailer, I just told you that. I'm gonna go around the corner. So I've been contradicting myself a little bit. Is um, literally just do the bungees up. Oh, I can go under there. One on it. Oh, bugger. Right, one on it. That's all you've got. A bit of webbing. One on me. One on me. None on here because, well, there's no hook there. And that way, they don't flap around. Driving down the road and it looks pathetic. So yeah, you wouldn't have one of these, uh, you wouldn't have one of these at all unless you were one of the specials. Don't think um, when I first started with uh, Ken Jones, I don't think I had one of them for about 18 months. <laughs> I wasn't good enough for one of them. Because when you had one, you knew that, um, yeah, that, 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 yeah, you were special, you know what I mean? It was what was known as giving the cream. Because <laughs> there was nothing better to have one of them in all fairness back then when the weather was howling and we used to do a lot of um, up what we call the northeast, up around Newcastle and stuff like that. And the weather was always crap or a bit. Because the life, the, these made life so much easier. Oh. Ah, nine minutes left of my break. And then we can get on our merry little way and uh, load this trailer and see where we're off to next. There was something else I was going to say, but balls if I can remember what it was. That's what I was going to say. I remembered. What we would have done, like I said, is have the four coils behind the first two posts and one in the front. There'd be one strap on the front to pull it back. And I'm not exaggerating. If you had a cautious driver, you'd put one on the back as well. So you'd have the three coils in the middle that wouldn't normally be strapped. 
obviously you know that's highly illegal and you cannot do that obviously so for god's sake don't do it but we always we we now there's such a massive health and safety fanatical um culture with everything where you have to have um i think it's like um i'm not gonna say because somebody will just rip into it but basically you've got to have this the volume of straps on a on a product which is the to the volume of weight this to, re, to restrain okay so when we was back then doing that don't get me wrong we was going a little bit but we always had that in the in our head there was one strap holding that or there was this is um lying that way so we're constantly conscious of how the load was sitting on the trailer where now um perfect example like i said when I, when I loaded those top hats there's such an over over reaction on load restraint that drivers become very relaxed and go ah well it can't go nowhere because there's there's six straps holding that one piece and um, when you get complacent that's when your problems will start that is where you will have the accident where you will throw a coil off a bed or you will lose a load because you're too uh, reliant on was holding everything together pardon me same as like well um all the food stuff and that. how are you supposed to strap that i don't know a lot of the time because you know if you ever tried to pack uh, pack strap 20 pallets of rice how it, it just don't don't work does it um it's a loose object which will constantly settle but you should never have no dramas carrying steel if you're ever unsure ask if you're ever in a dock loading or in a factory, ask. Always ask. Don't ever be frightened to ask someone. There's no such thing as a stupid question because if it was stupid, you'd know the answer. So you wouldn't have to answer it. Answer it. Ask it. So, right, I'm waffling on again anyway. Um, I'm waiting to find out where I'm going to load, actually. So what else was there? Anything else? Oh, can't really remember. Lacking in the old content on this one, are we really? A little bit. But I do apologise for that. There's not a lot I can do. It's um, strange to see all these factories gone, though. You know, this place used to be absolutely heaving. And when it was um, known as the old orb up the front, before they built all the back of this, they used to still have ships coming in, but they're tipping the coils off, which I think stopped about I don't know, fifteen years ago. <sighs> right, 